Good morning guys. We are here on the boat and today we are going to try to get uh, some of our Dyneema stays in place. I think we're going to start with like the whiskers, the bob stays, and the boomkin stays. We're just kind of getting everything together and doing a little research about the lashings and Nestor is just taking a look at some of the pins that we have here. Now all of our fittings for the most part are half inch fittings and we have half inch pins um, and the holes in our chain plates are half inch holes but we have some chain plates that these half inch pins don't fit in even though they fit in some of the half inch fittings and then there's some half inch fittings that the half inch pins that fit in other fittings don't fit in. I'll show you here. These are half inch fittings. This is a half inch pin. Fits in there beautifully, nice and smooth. Take the same pin into another half inch fitting, this one, and they don't fit in there. So these all have um, little fiberglass collars on the inside of them for um, corrosion, so you're not mixing aluminum and stainless. So Nestor's going to have to just sand out this collar a little bit in this one so that the half inch pin fits through there. Very strange, both Cooligo go half inch fittings, but these same half inch pins that fit perfectly in these half inch holes don't fit perfectly in the half inch holes in the chain plates. So he's also going to have to take um, some sandpaper to the chain plate and make those holes just a little bit bigger so that all of our pins fit. So it's a trick that I know, you put it wrapped around a little bit. This is 150. It goes little by little. He's doing it right in front of the hatch, so none of the stuff is actually going into the garbage can. It's all going on the floor behind him. <laughs> it's a very professional technique there. Beautiful. Perfectly fit. Then we will start working on our lashings. So basically on this end of our fitting, this goes on the chain plate, and it goes like this. And this is where your lashings start, so we'll do a Brummel splice through one of these holes and that'll be the beginning of our lashing. And then um, we'll have to do that on every one of these. And then we can take them outside and actually lash them to the other end of the fitting, which are these, which will be in the other... Uh, on the chain plate. Yeah. Well, these ones go on the... however it goes. Yeah. One goes on the chain plate <laughs> and then one goes... Like for instance, on the bracket, on the they all go to the, those. Yeah, if these are the bumpkin stays, one goes to the pin on the um, the pin plate. I guess it is a chain plate, but it's like on our stainless bumpkin, and then the other one will go down to the chain plate on the side of the hull. So a little complicated, but we'll show you. I'm sure we'll be taking plenty of video. Um, because when we are looking online about these kinds of things, there isn't really any video about it. Even the Cooligo site for how to do your lashings doesn't say anything about doing that Brummel splice on these fittings. Uh, Nestor and I just started looking around and we're like, it looks like, I mean, what would you do with that other end of it if you tied a knot in it or whatever? It, it's not really that secure and we found the Brummel splice just in images online. And the other thing they haven't really clarified, um, when we talked to John at Cooligo Marine, he told us that we should make all of our rigging line distance 18 to 20 inches shorter than it is to leave space for the lashings. I think at Cooligo they do 18 inches. He told us we could do a little bit more to give ourselves some more leniency. So that would mean that we would need 18 to 20 inches of lashing, I would assume. But on the website, it says that all your lashing should be between 8 and 14 inches, which doesn't really make sense to me. So 
we're gonna have to check that out um, waiting to call John it's a little difficult because Cooligo is on the west coast so not only is it daylight savings time but they're also quite a few hours earlier than us so in the morning when we wake up and start our projects we gotta wait about four hours before we can talk to anybody on the west coast we just want to make sure that we're documenting the things that we're having a hard time finding uh, so that for whoever is doing this in the future at least you'll be able to take a look at our videos and hopefully find a bit better explanation about how this gets done <laughs> I love my life, 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 I love my life. No, no, we don't know where tomorrow might bring God the future, the hours away. So me, I live my life today. Me, I live my life today. Yeah. So love me, make me talk, what I want to talk. Me have nothing to say. So me, I go live my life today. Me, I live my life today. Yeah. So love me, make me talk, what I want to talk. Me have nothing to say. So me, I go live my life today. Me, I go live my life today. So everybody help me sing it out. I love my life. Oh, I love my life. Oh, I love my life. So may I live my life today. So we ended up calling. Thanks, John, for answering all our crazy calls at all times um, and all our questions. So he actually told us that you do 18 times 8 and then you add 3 feet more. Our 18 inches is what we left our stage short specifically for doing the lashings. So some people leave more than 18 inches. Um, on some of ours, we left 20 because we wanted them to be a little bit uh, shorter than the others. Some people leave four feet or more for yeah. their lashing. So it's whatever your lashing is. If you're using the Cooligo Terminators, then it's whatever you've left for your lashings times eight. And then he said they add two or three feet, depending. You want to leave plenty because you're not sure exactly once the splice is done and all of that, how much space there's going to be there. There's a little bit of give with stretch and stuff like that when you're doing all the different Bromel splices and burying's and stuff like that. Now that we have that figured out, Nestor just spliced one up with the proper amount. And, I'm gonna go and, put it and on. he's going to go put it on. Put a little bit of a Tef 45. So it's a type of Tef one. So I put some on the stainless, and we're about to put the first spin of our new rigging. Hopefully, we don't throw it in the water. Hey, there we go. So, this is the first fitting. That will be one of the bumpkin stays, and then this will be one of our split back stays. Cleaning the holes. He's trying to put that fitting on like this. Boom, right? And this measurement from here to here is a little bit too deep for that fitting. So when it's going on, the holes in the fitting aren't able to line up. They're a little short, kind of like that, so the pin can't go through. So he's going to have to file this down, grind this down on that fitting in the front, but it's essentially a very similar thing to this. The first day, so I did the same thing, I did a little polishing of the pinhole that I drilled, it was just probably a little burr in there, and we are ready to put it on. So now he's just got to go back and forth through all four of those lashing holes. This is so exciting. I I feel like we've been waiting for this for years. So we're just doing the whisker stays now. This is just putting a little bit of that tough 45. Just what kind of like touches the, the it touches the stainless. up front with the lashing. Sorry about the wind today. Nestor and I are trying really hard to figure out a good mic situation for the boat and we have been having a lot of trouble. So, wow. 
This is gonna be so nice. <laughs> Mister is just putting on the bob stay now. And we're just kind of putting everything in place, like I kind of said earlier. Um, we are going to tension all of these properly and Nestor might put some plastic spacers where there's some loose forks and stuff like that just to uh, solidify everything a little bit better but we just want to put everything in place first to make sure we have all the bits and pieces we need and everything fits. Look at those flippers. Look at those pumpkin stays. To, sir. Uh, good morning. So, this morning we were putting some plastic bushings that I like to put between the forks so the forks always stays lined up even if you take tension off of it. And then uh, we kind of like started this morning tightening the stays. So, this is a four to one purchase that I use for, I used it for lifting the dinghy and now I use it for like a, like a support for the dinghy bracket. This Cooligo stuff likes to be tensioned aligned so it has a soft shackle to the terminate for terminator in the bottom and a soft shackle a soft shackle and then i just have a, a bow line there and then you can just kind of like really crank it nice i'm sure we're gonna have to do it a bunch so it's really nice having a a That's nice way, really nice. Nice way of doing it. Very cool idea. So Nestor's just looking at it from far away. One of the big things in rigging is checking out how it actually looks from far away where you can see if something is a little too tight and actually pulling down on um, like our bumpkin or if it's too loose and our bumpkin seems to be up in the air. The same thing on the rig itself. You can put different angles in your mast by tightening your rigging certain ways and you want to make sure that you don't have any weird support in there. You kind of want it all evenly supported um, and the best way to do that is to get some distance from the boat and really look at the straight lines that um, you're trying to form. What do you think? I think that it might be a little too cracked up. And maybe we should just try and put the scale on it. You want the pressure to be even? Yeah. That's a good idea, for sure. Okay, so this is the end of the lashing. We've got that on a soft shackle and it's hooked to the four to one purchase, so we're able to tension that off. And then what Nestor's got going right there is just a temporary tie in order to hold all the lashing lines nice and tight so that we can release this end which is causing all the tension and we don't lose all the tension that's in those lines and then that end of the lashing line will be used to tie off the lashings so that they don't slip. And Cooligo recommends making a, an hourglass shape. So you start about a third of the way down your lashing lines up here with your first knots and then you follow it down so that you have equal distance on either end and a nice tight knot in the center. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me, it's really windy out. Um, he's putting 20 wraps on that temporary tie and tightening them real tight so that we get as little slippage as possible as we release the tension on the end of the lashing line. Now you go through the middle of your lashing lines and then down through the eye of your lashings what that looks like there. I don't know if I've got enough of a zoom on there so you can see. So up top Nestor went through the center 
and then through the center. So he had four on either side and then went through two on one of the sides and down through the eye on the bottom. Yes, you want the, you'll see now, you want the knot to, to get tighter. So it's really tricky to see here in the camera. I'm trying to give you guys the best view possible. Okay, so you can see what he's done essentially is gotten a line on this side, on the other side here. And so when you pull on that now, it's gonna squeeze all of those together and make it really nice and tight. All right. And then two hitches to lock that in place. Nestor's let that purchase go. Actually, beautiful. So you, this one's gonna move, right? Right. But this one didn't move at all. I was watching them. Yep. And then you do it a third time. Each time going through that same part of the rope. Yep. Just like that. Pull down on that real tight. And then you start doing same thing, but on in its own new loop. It's wrapped around three times. Each time it gets closer to your stay and further away from the chain plate. So you're moving towards the center of your lashing. And then you start doing the same thing, but in its own new hole, going all the way down the line until you get that same distance away from the other side of your lashing. Yeah, I see. I believe so. So then you just keep repeating that same step over and over again and you'll start to notice it spiraling around the rope below it. If you made friendship bracelets as a child, you'll know this as a Chinese staircase. <laughs> and Nestor's just using, what do you got there, Nestor? A screwdriver. Just a screwdriver to wrap the Dyneema around just to pull each one of these knots nice and tight. You're supposed to do it so that you have an hourglass shape. So essentially till, so you have a third out one end and a third out the other end and the rest of the center is bound. Let's see what it says right um, here. The website. Okay, so it says um, repeat step four, which is the hitch that you're doing right now. And it says you'll notice that it starts to spiral around. And three or four times of step four is fine for security. But if you keep going, the spiral looks really nice. Yeah, I would just do all of them. All yeah, the rest, of the, the rest of the line. Exactly. You just use up the line that you have there. All right, you guys can probably hear nothing. It's blowing like 30 knots out. But Nestor is just finishing the knots on the last stay that we had to tighten. So that's our bob stay. And we got our whiskers done and our bumpkins done. And yeah, I'm trying to block the mic so that maybe you guys can hear something I'm saying, but wow, this is it. All right, I'm gonna hide here behind the Dodger so that maybe you can hear me a little bit better. Uh, Nestor is just up on the bow of the boat, tightening our last stay, the bob stay. We got both the bumpkins uh, tightened, both the whiskers tightened, and now the bob stay is almost done as well. And that's basically the last of the prep that we need to do on the actual boat for the mast to go back up. So that's super exciting. Now we need to head over to the mast and put the spreaders on and the fore stay and the inner fore stay, get a couple things ready on the actual rig before it's ready to go up. And then just coordinating trucks and trailers and the lift and all that stuff again and trying to find a day where it's not blowing 35 knots. So it looks like next week things are supposed to calm down a little bit 
So hopefully we'll have a little break from this insane wind that we've had this week and be able to pop the rig up and have it done for Christmas. That would be so exciting. But So while Nestor has been working on tightening all the stays, I've been in and out helping him and inside cooking up a picnic. So I've got some elotes, which are corn on the cob with butter and seasoning and cheese. Woo, it's really sunny out there. I got a nice salad, some steamed artichokes, and some stuffed portobello mushrooms we're gonna throw on the grill. We're gonna pack it up with the barbecue, hop in the power bowl, and go have a picnic. So we'll see you guys over there. We're here at the beach. It's our little barbecue setup. I just put the mushrooms on. They're gonna be so good. Goat cheese and feta stuffed. We've got a beautiful salad, some elotes, steamed artichokes. So we're in for a feast. We're gonna watch this sunset and chill out. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. We love you guys.